why don't you tell your friends about your birthday? Why don't you tell your friends? Yeah, you had a birthday. You're an old man now. You're seven years old. You're not a baby anymore. Okay, you're, of course you're the baby. Of course you're the baby. I'll never say it again. He's the baby. Why, hello there, endurance nerds. You're joining me yet again in my journey to piss people off on the internet. Hit the like button if you enjoy stirring the pot. Fun times, I think. Anyway, today we are diving into one of the most controversial topics in endurance nutrition, ketones. Many claim they may just be a secret weapon for cyclist runners and triathletes. I mean, they're expensive, so they have to work, right? Or are they just another overhyped supplement designed to separate you from your hard-earned cash? Now, if you've been around endurance sports for a while, you've probably seen elite teams or athletes experimenting with ketone supplementation. Maybe you've even heard those whispers, or obnoxious screaming, that they're the next big thing. But the question is, do they actually work? So in my oh-so-delightful way, I would like to break down this topic so that you can understand what ketones are and how they work in endurance exercise, the science behind ketone supplements, both the hype and the reality, and whether or not you should consider adding them to your training and racing. So buckle up, because as always, we're going to cut through the bullshit and get straight to the facts. So what are ketones? Before we can even talk about whether ketones are useful, we need to understand what they are and how they function in the body. Your body's primary fuel sources are carbohydrates and fats, prioritizing carbohydrates first. And before anybody gets all uppity about protein, while protein can technically be converted into glucose via gluconeogenesis, it's not something you want to rely on. Burning through muscle for energy, especially in sport, is obviously a last resort and not a strategy. Now, normally when you consume carbs, they get broken down into glucose, which your cells can use very quickly and efficiently for energy. But what happens when carbs are scarce? Enter ketones. When carbohydrate availability is low, whether it's due to fasting, prolonged exercise, or a ketogenic diet, your body shifts to burning fat as its primary fuel. Fatty acids from triglycerides extracted from stored body fat or dietary fat can be used directly by many tissues, including muscle for energy. However, some organs, like the brain here, can't use fatty acids efficiently. That's where ketones come in. When your glucose is low, your liver is going to convert those fatty acids into ketone bodies, which can act as an alternative fuel source for the brain, but they can also be used by muscles and other tissues. While they are not the preferred fuel source for your muscles, Fatty acids and ketone bodies can act as a suitable fuel source for many of those activities. For reference, there are three primary ketone bodies. Beta-hydroxybutyrate, or BHB, which is the most abundant and the one used in most supplements. We'll talk about that more in a bit. The second is acetoacetate, or ACAC, readily converted into BHB or expelled as waste. And the last one is acetone, the least useful and basically a byproduct. It's responsible for that telltale aroma you might exude after a carb-depleted session. Hell, maybe it'll be the next big scent from DKNY. We're not. This process is often confused with fat metabolism itself, but fat burning and ketone production are two separate things. Most fat burning during endurance exercise happens without producing ketones at all. Ketone production really begins when you're significantly carb restricted. And this is the key to understanding whether ketone supplementation actually provides an advantage or just adds an expensive middleman to a process your body already does naturally. Now the real question is, can ketones replace carbs for endurance athletes? And the short answer is not really. Ketones can provide energy, but they don't work as efficiently as carbohydrates. Glucose is metabolized fat faster and provides more power per unit of oxygen consumed. And before anybody says, but the Tour de France pros use them, keep in mind that these are elite athletes meticulously managing their fueling with nutritionists. They aren't running on ketones as a primary fuel. They are slamming carbs all day long. Ketones might be part of their recovery or endurance strategy, but if you think popping a ketone shot before your weekend group ride is going to mimic pro level performance, well, let's just say your legs are in for a rude awakening. But we'll put more meat on the bone to make sense of all this as we break things down in the video. Now. Carbs are the premium fuel for high intensity efforts. When you're pushing threshold or above, you need glucose because it produces energy faster than fats or ketones ever could. While they may be suitable for long steady state endurance work, studies have increasingly shown that fatty acids and ketones are not suitable to meet the typical demands and variability found in endurance sports. This is because carbohydrates are already partially oxidized, meaning that they require less oxygen to convert into ATP. Fat metabolism, on the other hand, is more oxygen intensive and involves additional steps to break down into usable energy. So while fats provide more ATP per molecule, the rate at which that energy becomes available is much slower, making carbs the go-to fuel for intensity efforts or rapid energy is critical. Ketones are a backup fuel source, not a replacement for carbohydrates. They are most effective during lower intensity efforts like zone two training or ultra endurance events where fat oxidation is a primary energy source. However, even in those scenarios, a strict low carb approach is generally not ideal as most of the activities we face in the real world are not perfectly controlled. Instead, a blended strategy incorporating moderate carbohydrate intake strategic timed allows those ultra endurance athletes to optimize fuel availability, ensuring sustained performance across those varying intensities. We've already established that your body can naturally produce ketones during prolonged exercise or fasting. So what does that mean for exogenous ketones, the supplements that you see the pro teams using and polluting your Instagram feed? Do they actually work? 
And to understand this, we need to start by breaking down the two different types of exogenous ketones and why this distinction matters. The first type you will see are ketone salts. These combined beta-hydroxybutyrate with minerals like sodium, potassium, or magnesium. They're widely available, relatively affordable, and can be easier on the stomach compared to esters. I'm gonna talk about those in a moment. But there is a catch. They don't raise blood ketone levels as effectively as esters. The absorption is slower, meaning any potential performance benefits are weaker and less immediate. The high mineral content can also cause GI distress. Taking a large dose of ketone salts can come with the side of bloating, nausea, or the kind of stomach cramps that make you rethink your life choices. And because they're the weaker supplement, athletes may be tempted to ramp up the dose. And much of the benefit may come from the extra electrolytes, not the ketones themselves. Some of the perceived endurance benefits may just be from sodium and potassium replenishment rather than the ketone bodies doing the work, really blurring the lines in terms of their effectiveness. Which brings us to ketone esters. These are the purest and most effective form, rapidly increasing blood ketone levels, entering the bloodstream much faster. However, they come with two major drawbacks. First, they're insanely expensive. Unless you're sponsored or have an unlimited supplement budget, this isn't something you're going to be chugging before every single one of your workouts. And second, they taste like fermented regret. If you've ever wondered what rocket fuel might taste like, ketone esters will give you a pretty good idea. It's probably no surprise that they can be as rough on your gut as they are on your taste buds. But on paper, esters are far superior in terms of bioavailability and actual blood ketone elevation. So does that mean ketone salts are useless? Not necessarily, but their utility is certainly much more limited. While ketone salts can slightly raise blood ketone levels, they don't provide the rapid or significant boost that esters do. If you're hoping for the same effects seen in ketone ester studies, you're probably going to be disappointed. With that in mind, why would somebody want to use ketone salts at all? And an athlete might choose to use them if you're looking for maybe a mild boost in ketones without spending a fortune, or if you need those extra electrolytes anyway and tolerate the added sodium pretty well. But now that we've clarified the types of ketones, let's talk about what they're supposed to do. Proponents of ketone usage will generally generally tout benefits like glycogen sparing. Some studies suggest that ketones may help reduce reliance on glycogen, which could prolong endurance before fatigue sets in. Since ketones serve as an alternative fuel source, this theoretically allows the body to stretch out the glycogen stores, delaying depletion in long events. This aligns with that idea of metabolic flexibility, where the body will adapt to using different energy substrates more efficiently. This type of flexibility can absolutely be trained naturally, but the proposed promise of those ketones is that the flexibility can be more immediately stimulated through supplementation. Another strongly touted benefit is reduced lactate production. Because ketones provide energy without generating lactate through glycolysis, some claim that they could reduce muscle burn and help buffer fatigue. The idea is that by shifting partial energy reliance to ketones, the body produces less lactate under submaximal conditions, theoretically preventing that acidic buildup that contributes to muscular fatigue. Another potential benefit growing in popularity is improved recovery. Some research suggests that ketones could aid in glycogen replenishment and inflammation reduction post-exercise. This is based on the idea that ketones might enhance muscle protein synthesis and reduce oxidative stress markers after endurance exercise. Proponents will argue that supplementing with ketones after intense training could support faster recovery and muscle repair. And lastly is its potential as brain fuel, especially during prolonged exercise. Unlike fatty acids, ketones can cross the blood-brain barrier, meaning that they can provide stable energy for the brain during ultra-endurance events, or if you need to get some focus work done to pay for that expensive equipment. This is often highlighted as a potential way to combat mental fatigue, which can be just as performance limiting as physical fatigue in multi-hour or multi-day events. Sounds pretty promising, right? Not so fast. Here's where the science gets a little bit murky. While ketones may provide an alternative energy source, studies have shown that they can actually reduce performance in high intensity exercises. Research published in the Journal of Physiology found that trained cyclists who supplemented with ketones had worse 20 minute time trial performance compared to those using carbohydrates alone. Why? Because ketones don't generate ATP as quickly as glucose does, which is a problem when energy demands spike. Some studies suggest that when ketones are present, the body may prioritize them over carbohydrates and fats, but at a cost. In efforts requiring bursts of power, sprinting, climbing, attacks, this can reduce maximal power output. Essentially, you might sustain endurance longer, but at the expense of how hard you can push. This trade-off makes ketones less viable for races where surging efforts are necessary. I already mentioned the proposed benefit of reducing lactate. Sounds good in theory, but in practice, the evidence is mixed at best. While some studies suggest that ketones could reduce lactate production, others indicate that they might just shift how lactate is processed rather than preventing its accumulation altogether. This means that even if ketones do alter lactate dynamics, they may not actually translate to reduce fatigue or improve performance. So if you're dreaming of ketones magically solving that leg-burning fatigue on a climb, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Then there are the gastrointestinal issues. We talked about the potential impacts of ketone salts in large dosages, bloating, nausea, diarrhea, none of these are helpful mid-race. Ketone esters, while more effective at elevating those blood ketone levels, can cause serious nausea and GI discomfort in their own right, especially if taken in significant amounts. Many endurance athletes who have experimented with ketones of both types report 
report significant GI distress, limiting their practical use. Additionally, some early research suggests that prolonged ketone supplementation could reduce insulin sensitivity over time. This is really concerning because insulin sensitivity is crucial for efficient carbohydrate metabolism. If ketones alter how the body regulates glucose uptake, they could interfere with an athlete's ability to efficiently fuel with carbs when needed. While more research is definitely needed to truly understand the impacts here, this is a potential downside that hasn't been fully explored and could be a deal breaker. One of the more promising benefits of the research surrounds what we discussed in terms of brain fuel, but it's important to have some realistic expectations. Could this help during a 24-hour race or a multi-day event? Seems reasonably likely. Could it help you to remember where you left your keys in the middle of an 80-mile ride? Maybe not so much. Mental fatigue is a real performance limiter, and ketones might offer a slight edge in ultra-endurance situations. But for your average endurance athlete, proper fueling, hydration, and caffeine are likely to have a much bigger impact on mental sharpness than sipping on some expensive ketones. The elite and pro athletes using these are doing more volume per month than many of us are in a week. Strike that. Reverse it. This way, please. And they understand the dynamics and layer on ketones after they've already incorporated those other superior and cheaper fundamentals. And finally, as I mentioned before, not all ketone products are created equal. While true ketone esters are the most effective at rapidly increasing blood ketone levels, most of the commercially available ketone supplements on the market aren't using those. Instead, ketone salts and ketone precursors like butane diol-based products like Ketone IQ are much more common because they're cheaper, taste slightly less like jet fuel, and are easier to market. Unfortunately, many of the benefits demonstrated in research come from high-quality ketone esters that do not translate into ketone salts or precursors. We already talked about the limitations of ketone salts, but the marketing of ketone esters often includes those ketone precursors. But these products are not true exogenous ketones, like what can be found in Delta G or the original ketone IQ formula before they move to the butane diol base formula. These precursors require conversion in the liver before they actually raise ketone levels. This makes them much slower and less potent than the esters themselves, and they might not reach the levels required to provide the benefits often attributed to ketone supplementation. The takeaway? Many of the ketone supplements that you see on the market likely won't give you the performance boost that you expect. If you're just looking for a mild ketone bump, they might have some utility. But if you're expecting them to deliver the full range of benefits that you've heard about, you're probably going to be woefully disappointed. So where does this leave us? Should you use ketones? Let's break it down based on different types of endurance athletes. The athletes that might benefit from ketones are your ultra endurance athletes. So your Ironman, ultra marathon, or multi-day cycling events. If you're out there for eight plus hours, ketones may help with metabolic flexibility and brain functions during that extreme fatigue. Or similarly, athletes doing back-to-back -back high volume training days. We talked about the research suggesting that ketones could aid in glycogen replenishment and recovery, though carbs are still going to remain king. And finally, athletes already adapted to ketogenic states. If you're fully keto adapted, exogenous ketones may help to bridge some energy gaps for you. But this applies to a very small subset of athletes and you're never going to hear me recommend keto to any athlete. Those who probably won't benefit from ketones, short to medium course racers, so your 5Ks, criteriums, short course triathlons, anything fast and glycolytic relies primarily on carbs for peak performance and ketones are just not going to cut it. Or athletes who rely on anaerobic bursts, track cyclists, road sprinters, cross country skiers. Explosive power depends on rapid ATP production from glucose and ketones are far too slow for this type of effort and may actually impede that production by competing for the metabolic use. And finally, anybody who's looking for a magic pill. Ketones aren't going to fix poor fueling strategy, lack of training, or bad pacing. No shortcuts here. Sorry, guys. But if you fall into any of these categories or anywhere in between, you need to take a long, hard look at how you need to perform and whether or not the science actually supports usage in your routine. For my money, I think the science is more compelling when it comes to brain fuel and some recovery benefits, but I'm far less sanguine on any direct and immediate impact on performance. The risk of GI distress, interference with ATP production, it's just a bit steep for anybody who doesn't have an army of experts behind them to ensure the correct dosages and timing to prevent those conflicts. At the end of the day, ketones aren't the magic bullet some claim them to be, but they're not completely useless either. The reality is that they're not a substitute for carbohydrates, they don't drastically improve performance, and their high cost and taste make them a tough sell for most athletes. If you're an ultra-endurance athlete, logging back-to-back -back long training days, or experimenting with recovery strategies, ketones may just have a place in your toolbox. But if your goal is to get faster, hit higher power numbers, or crush your next race, smart carb fueling will outperform ketones every single time. The research is mixed. And let's be real, if a supplement costs as much as a new set of tires and tastes like expired nail polish remover, it better provide more than just potential benefits. The science just doesn't fully support ketones as a game changer for endurance sport, at least not yet. That said, if you're still curious, experiment in training and not on race day. Be skeptical, be data-driven, and don't let marketing hype do your thinking for you. But let me know, have you ever tried ketones? If so, which ones? And what has been your experience? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, give those like and subscribe buttons a bit of a whack. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.